people oftentimes just buy themselves a job. They, they, they start a business, they work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. They're not doing anything to help improve the business. They're not working on strategy and they're not working on long-term goals. And the whole concept of firing yourself is to get yourself out of that day-to-day -day minutia so that you can start focusing on the big picture. But it's a lot of process work, understanding what you do in your business, who does your business, finding those gaps, figuring out all of the things that you're doing that don't add value or that you can outsource. The following is brought to you by Thrive, the end-to-end -end client experience platform that helps you get the job, manage the job, and get credit. Hey, hey, this is Gordon Henry from Winning on Main Street. And this week you get to meet Julie Traxler and Corey Harris. Julie and Corey are the founders of SB Pace, a business startup consulting company. They also run a national radio show called Defeat the Chaos and a podcast called BizQuick, offering sound business advice for entrepreneurs tired of the daily grind. Sound familiar? Seriously, now what a Small Business Guide to Disaster Preparedness is also a book they wrote. Uh, it's an Amazon bestseller. And uh, the book is an ideal one to guide you to building your business strong enough to withstand the challenging times that we all live in today. So welcome, Julie and Corey. Thank you. Thanks yep. for having us, Gordon. Thanks for having us. I am excited to uh, speak to you. And as I said, a little intimidating because you guys are sort of all over the place. Podcasts, books, national radio show, pretty awesome. So uh, hopefully I can add a little value to all the content that you have out there. So why don't we just start with SB Pace? I, I guess that stands for Small Business Pace. What, what is it and what do you do out there? Do you have that right? Does it stand for Small Business Pace? You got that right. The uh, Pace stands for Planning, Advising, Coaching, Expertise. Um, we were brainstorming about two years ago when we started the business and came up with that acronym. We're like, oh, that's really cool. And uh, it's really not that cool because it's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Most people think it's called SB Space. So we actually, for our annual holiday party, we give out Spacey Awards, which is, you know, remember the old like moon, uh, man on the moon type um, awards that they give out at the MTV Movie Awards or Music Awards? Yeah. Yeah. We we give out Spaceys here. and But we give them out for like, you know, most emotional team member and biggest bully on the block. But yeah, a lot of people get the name wrong. So you guys do small business coaching and consulting from what I understand. And, you know, there's lots of companies that say they do that. How are you different? There are a lot of companies that say that they do that. What's, what's funny, Gordon, is we literally just in December um, redid a competitive analysis for ourselves, right? So it's one of the things that we always recommend for our clients is a competitive analysis so they can really understand how to differentiate themselves. And we're like, let's do one on ourselves. So we took like eight, eight either companies or individuals that we thought were really strong competitors of ours. And we did this analysis and it was really easy after doing that to see the ways that were different. Right. So we don't, we do have some key partners that we outsource things that we're not good at, but we, or that's just, they're not in our wheelhouse. Right. For example, we are not logo designers. So, but we have some people that we can work with. So we don't really claim anything to, to have any skills that we don't actually have. We, we see a lot of coaches or consultants who pretend or say that they know everything or can do everything. And they, and we know that's simply not true. Um, I think the biggest way we differentiate ourselves is one of our core values is that we don't sell you anything you don't need. We, we both come from consulting backgrounds. I spent time in big four consulting and I really hated the amount of times I saw people being squeezed to buy a service or a product they didn't need. So we are very clear. We're never going to take your money from you if it's not something you need. Yeah, right. So I was looking at your website a little bit and trying to understand the programs or packages you sell. So for folks who are listening who are interested in availing themselves of your services, maybe you could tell us, like, what is the package that you sell people? How do they, how do they sort of enlist you? Yeah, so great question. And the, I would, I would say that everything that we do is customizable, right? With the exception, I mean, you could buy just straight up coaching from us and we will, we offer a coaching service. Most of what we do is hybrid. It's coaching and consulting blended together. And there's a lot of stuff that will do the work for you. And then there are other things where it's like, you're going to do the work, learn how to do it on your own. 
Um, one of our top services that we offer is helping entrepreneurs launch their first business. If they've never done it before, we walk them through from that idea all the way to they've got a viable business that's been launched. And then we also do um, operational improvements and we really build packages very specific for our clients and what they need. And that just, that's one of the ways that helps us fulfill that core value of not selling something you don't need. Yeah. Right. So, so um, one of your lines that I hear you say in, you know, some of the things I've heard, heard uh, of yours uh, on the radio or on podcasts is you, you say fire yourself. Uh, so what is, what does fire yourself mean? Well, as I'm sure you probably know, and, and the small businesses you've worked with is that people oftentimes just buy themselves a job. They, they, they start a business, they work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. They're not doing anything to help improve the business. They're not working on strategy and they're not working on long-term goals. And the whole concept of firing yourself is to get yourself out of that day-to-day -day minutia so that you can start focusing on the big picture. So that's a lot of, it's a lot of work. It's not, it's not easy work. And that's one thing that we also like to say is we don't try and sugarcoat anything and, and say, oh yeah, this is just a quick fix. These are the three things you need to do. So, um, but it's a lot of process work, understanding what you do in your business, who does your business, finding those gaps, figuring out all of the things that you're doing that don't add value or that you can outsource. Because that's one thing that small business owners, they don't like doing is outsourcing. Like we all have kind of a, a controlling uh, mindset and we don't want to give up control. So that's what we help them do is figure out, all right, you can get this off your plate so that you can have time off or you can focus on bigger picture items. Right. Right. So Corey, just to follow up on that. So, you know, we all know a lot of small business owners are sort of strapped for, you know, cash, particularly if they're kind of in the still early phases. What is the ideal client for you? Like, do you work with, you know, real startups and how do they decide that, yeah, this is a, this is an expenditure that's going to give me a lot of value. So who is that customer and how do they make that decision? So we do work with like legitimate, just straight startups, people who um, are currently, you know, they have a job in corporate America and they're just trying to get out of it. They're trying to start their own business. Um, but we also, I mean, we consider pretty much anybody who's under like two years of business as still kind of a startup. You're still learning a lot of things. And a lot of people have found themselves in that position because they, they had a hobby, they started making some money off of it and they realized, oh, I can quit or, you know, I, I'm making enough money that I can do this full time. And like, they don't do any of the, the foundational work that they need at the beginning. And so we work with a lot of those people who have an existing revenue stream who are just trying to make their business more successful. So you guys have a background, as I understand, in uh, Fortune 500. I think one of you was in a large company. And you mentioned Julie, a big four, I guess you mean big four accounting firm uh, or consulting firm. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit more about that. How did you make this jump from working you know, in corporate America, quote unquote, to deciding, hey, what I want to do is help and consult small businesses? How'd you make that journey? <laughs> All right. I'll go first on this one. I have been fired more times than most people have had actual jobs. I am really not employable um, I, because I am extremely, well, I, I get, I'm pretty passionate about the work that I do, but I also just don't really do well when I am in a situation where I'm not adding value. And I, I just feel like I'm just sort of, you know, filling a space. So I kind of tend to get a little, maybe a little bit of an attitude. Um, I was Corey's boss once and got fired from that company. Although he'll say I got laid off. I say I got fired. But um, so for me, I had been sort of going back and forth between being a consultant and being a full-time employee for a number of years. And the last time that I got let go, um, that was actually Corey and I were working together at a company. And I was just like, I can't, I can't do this. I don't want to go back to being a full-time employee anywhere. And so I have been doing consulting since then. And then when COVID hit, Corey and I just decided like, hey, let's team up together and start something really amazing. Yeah, because like a lot of people in early 2020, we found ourselves unemployed. So yeah. it's like, what, <laughs> what can we do to improve this situation? And that was actually just kind of interesting because what we started off doing for our business is nowhere near what we're doing now. And it's like, a lot of people found themselves in that position of uh, I either I've got a lot more time on my hands right now, or I'm unemployed or any of those things. And they realize, well, why don't I just be my own boss? So 
that's where we kind of stumbled into the startup thing. We didn't expect in 2020 that we would be helping people start businesses. It seems kind of crazy, but I mean, that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting lesson of, of the pandemic is that so many people did leave their, uh, if you will, corporate jobs and move into startups or to build their own thing. And I guess we'll find out how that all worked out. You know, it's still, it's still happening. Um, but it definitely seems to be part of the, you know, transformation and we've all heard the great resignation. Um, so, so far, I mean, so this has only been going on for a couple of years yet, and and, and yet you have uh, a lot of successes from what I can tell. Uh, on your website, I found uh, some fantastic testimonials actually from, you know, real small businesses who you've worked with. Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, some of the success stories you've had where, where you've helped somebody who's who's really turned the corner or made it big or because you helped them. Well, who do you want to start with? Caveman? Yeah. So yeah, we were working with a company and the, again, this was uh, one of those people who just kind of found himself as a business owner where he had this idea at the start of the pandemic to uh, sell kind of like your do, do it yourself weight kits. So you can make your ki- weight kits at home because the gyms were closed and nobody could find weights and all of that. Um, so we, we, he hired us um, to just help him kind of get his business on like on track. And so we helped him move, um, his uh, logistics company because he was just kind of getting screwed by the previous one. So we helped coordinate all of that. We built him a new website. We helped document the processes, working on financials, that fun stuff. Got him, and got him worked work. with a designer, got him a new logo um, as, and worked on his branding and did a, like some operational improvements for him. And um, we've kind of been just sort of managing the business for him since yeah. then. <laughs> Um, so that, and, and actually, because he also had, you know, he has a regular full-time job and this was just sort of a side hustle. And so he doesn't really have a lot of bandwidth for it. So we, um, you know, helped him to really operationalize things so that it becomes much easier for his business to, to run with him, kind of being able to take his hands off of the wheel, if you will, and, and focus on his other, his, his full-time job. So that was, a that's a, that was a big one for us. That was a lot of fun to work with. Yeah, that one. Um, and then we helped a company in Hawaii. They're a real estate management company. Um, they sold their business and it was, uh, we were initially hired to help them set their business up, get everything in order so that they could find potential buyers and and just make that process easier. And uh, I don't know, probably less than a week, two weeks into working with them, they gave us a call. They're like, we've got an offer on the table. So we had to shift everything from we're like setting up their business to just kind of being their coaches, being the people in their corner, helping them negotiate, reviewing the, um, the LOI of talking like communication strategies, all that fun stuff. Yeah. The due diligence and helping with that. And actually as a result of us working on the LOI for them, they ended up getting significantly more money for the sale. Cause I don't, he didn't realize that it was really a negotiation. He was just going to take the initial offer and we're like, no, 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 no. Let's ask for more money. Yeah. And it ended up working really out really, really well for me. Super happy with, with the end result. So um, I really thought though you were going to ask us for failures is where I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any you want to share? Uh... Personal failures with our business. Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You just, you, you certainly um, learn. And I, I do think it's interesting. We just had a conversation about this. Um, I think on Monday, Corey and I were talking about how, you know, since the most common thing that we typically do is we help businesses, we help entrepreneurs launch their first business, like doing an, you know, a post post mortem on all of them collectively, right? We look at it when we're done working with a client, but looking at it and saying, what do we need to be doing differently to, that helps our clients reach success faster, right? A lot of them come into it with this notion of, um, I'm going to launch this business. It's going to be an overnight success. And it's really hard to get people to understand, to really have proper expectations for it. doesn't, I mean, that's fantastic if it works like that and we hope it does, but that's not typically how it goes. And so we actually have a client right now that we're working with that's launching a business and they've had to make a little bit of a shift on the product that they're going to market with just simply because of supply chain issues. Right. And We sat down and had a very, very difficult and direct conversation with them about, are you just launching with this product because you want to launch something? And is this still on brand for you? And is it hit your target market? And we asked them a lot of questions with our goal being, if the answers aren't yes to these questions, 
then don't launch it. And they had done such a great job of working through what they wanted to launch with now and, and how they were going to tie that into their brand that by the end, we were like, okay, we're convinced let's keep moving forward. But we didn't, we just, we don't want to, there's a tremendous amount of, you know, financial investment for them on this particular business. And we didn't, we don't want them to lose that money. So it's like, how can we make sure that you're really, really solid before we take even another step further? And there's also the caveat in there still with, with, regardless of the product they go, that this is probably going to be a part-time job for a while until you can actually quit your full-time jobs and and make all of your revenue off this one business. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great advice. Uh, We're going to take a quick break to hear word from our sponsor. We'll be right back with more from Corey and Julie. This episode of winning on main street is brought to you by thrive the end-to-end client experience platform that includes everything small business owners need to meet their customers' expectations. Thrive's award-winning and fully mobile interface delivers technology previously reserved for big business to the fingertips of small business owners nationwide. Thrive's built specifically for small business, but there's nothing small about what it can do. Thrive handles your entire customer experience, helping business owners reach more customers, stay organized, get paid faster, and generate online reviews, all from a single device or screen. To learn more about Thrive, visit winningonmainstreet.com and click on Get a Demo. When it comes to software to run your business, there's no comparison. Check out Thrive today. And we're back with more from Corey and Julie of SB Pace. And before the break, we were talking a little bit about technology and automation and the importance of small businesses basically modernizing. And I mentioned to you, our parent company, Thrive, you know, we make a CRM for small businesses. And I'm wondering what your finding is with small businesses in terms of you know, adopting technology. What are the do's and don'ts? What are the things you say, hey, maybe save that for later, but let's focus on this now. Because, you know, so, so many small businesses we find are up comp- uh, competing with bigger businesses that, you know, have really mastered technology. And so, you know, the small businesses kind of have to get with the program a little bit in order to be efficient. What, what, what are your thoughts on that topic? Automate as much as you can. <laughs> Plain and simple. It's, it, it's one of those things that people often overlook because there is a cost. There's a learning curve. There's uh, potential for whatever that tool is to fail. So there, there's a lot of things, a, a lot of cons, but the more that you can automate those non-value added tasks, the the stuff that a machine should be doing, you should automate as much as you possibly can. And it, and it, there's going to be a cost, but the, you know, perform an ROI and just see if it makes sense. If, if the time that you get back, you can spend selling more or you're going to cut costs, figure all that stuff out. Don't just buy something to buy something, but definitely automate as much as you can. I would also add to that to um, really like evaluate the, the tools, but like there's a right size tool, I think for pretty much every size of your business, right? So when you're looking at, and somebody asked me the other day about, you know, what should I use for, you know, an email tool? And I was like, well, MailChimp is great, right? Like, I don't, I I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. I don't have any complaints about it. And it is not cost prohibitive. I'm like, but if you use Shopify, they have a built-in mail tool. So use that. So really understand, I think a lot of people don't even understand what's available to them. And, but people also tend to go with things that are just overly complicated or complex. And it's like, just simplify, take the most simple thing that you possibly can that gets the job done and start there. And as you grow, then you can change out tools. And the, just to add to that a little bit more, the thing that small businesses have the advantage that they have over the larger companies is that a lot of people don't want to work with the larger companies. Uh, If you go to do like, get your taxes done. Some people are just, they're, they're uh, just, scared of doing it on their own and they don't want to be treated like a number for like going with an H&R block. So they go find somebody local and you don't have to have technology that competes directly with H&R block. You're not going to be able to afford it or maintain it, but you can have uh, different values that you add to the business and you, you still need some technology, but it, you- yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Somebody said to me, you know, the best CRM system is a CRM system you use 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, it's, as you say, it's got to be right size. One of the things at Thrive we try to emphasize is onboarding uh, so that, you know, many, you know, many small business, many people, period, uh, aren't tech, technical or, or, or don't, you know, aren't as computer savvy as they'd like to be. Uh, and we really try to emphasize the kind of more human aspects of like getting people started so that they can go through the basic steps, getting value out of the software. Because again, if it's sitting on the, you know, sort of shelf and not being used, then obviously it's not really getting an ROI for that small business. I really appreciate you guys stopping by. I know you're busy. It sounds like you got a ton of things going between the book and the podcast and the radio show and, and the consulting business, but uh, this has been great and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you appreciate so much it. for having us. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by. And before you go, uh, how should people get in touch with you if they want to inquire more about actually using your services? Everything that you need to know is on our website. So just go to sbpace.com and you can connect with us however you want through the website. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, great to have you on the show. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please tell a friend or colleague to subscribe and leave us a five-star review. If you like the show, we'd really appreciate it. Until next time, make it a great week. Thank you.